You are listening to the Just Saying Podcast. Hey there, thanks for checking out an older episode of Just Saying Podcast. This episode was originally released on April 6th, April 6th, April 6th of... <laughs> I have a list of 2014. It featured me and Amanda talking in depth about long-term relationships. This one was actually one of our most popular podcasts. This episode was originally called Speeding Tickets and Long-Term Relationships, but I edited out the Speeding Tickets part when I moved it over to Rabble Press because I felt like we were just complaining about the law. If you want to hear more, please check us out on rabblepress.com and enjoy. Music in this episode was brought to you by Killer Beats. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Hey. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I suppose. Welcome to the Just Seen Podcast. I'm here with Amanda Campanero. Campanero. Nerdo. Amanda Campanero. Campanero. Close enough. Yeah, if we're coming yeah. back. Just saying podcast. To narrow it down, this is the second podcast I've done with Sal, your pal. There you go. First one, we talked about narcissism in our society. In this one, we will eventually pinpoint the very viral topic of relationships. By the way, we are, um, just to warn you, uh, there's a lot of activity in the background, so I apologize for that. Lame. Now I know not to record a podcast when there's a million people in the house. Uh Just saying. can party up in here. Up in this place, bro. Bro. Alright, bro. Brethren. Yo, brother. Yeah. Hear me. Long-term relationships. We seem to have a pretty interesting opinion on this topic. So we feel as if we should spread the word. Spread it. Just saying. Not, yeah, just saying. Yeah. There's a few statistics we are going to share. Because we did Mm -hmm. do a little bit of social media sort of looking around, browsing. This is the kind of podcast where people just talk. Mm -hmm. You just talk about whatever you want to talk. And then we'll eventually get to that. And hopefully... uh, You guys are cool with that, you know? (laughs) Actually, from the one that we did before, my friends were telling me I should make my own podcast because I was You even said that, yeah. I'm like, I'm kind of game, but I don't really have all this fancy equipment, so... Well, it's not fancy. It's not Pretty basic, uh, yeah. Like, your your phone has a better microphone (laughs) than probably that. I'm not even kidding. Probably, except my phone's been thrown everywhere possible. Like, Mm -hmm. I dropped it in Webster's Falls last summer, and then... I continue to drop it on like many different concrete surfaces. Pretty, pretty crappy situation, but hey, okay. still in one piece. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. That is cool. So, yeah. Amanda, so what is the longest you've been in a long term relationship for? I have never been in a long term relationship before. Really? Bold statement for a 21 year old to make. Yeah, the longest I've actually been was like a year and like probably seven weeks. One year, it's always seven like, weeks. It's like we get the we get to the one year and then things kind of fall apart. Um, yeah, you guys were kind of like uh, again. I I knew his ex girlfriend too, and like I hung out with him a lot too. You guys were pretty well. Like you had your ups and downs, obviously, mm-hmm. but you seem to be generally like in that honeymoon stage for like. Which I'm not saying is a bad thing, but it was just a little bit more exaggerated. Yeah. Than yeah. most like a lot of PDA and I was like I don't know if this is legit or if it is then all the power to them but I was like ah there's something off and what happens it It is what it is and look at you now Sal you're such a cool calm and collected kind of guy yeah I'm so mature cool as a cucumber yeah (laughs) take pride in that bruh I'm not perfect so you know I'll admit that Mm -hmm. I, I don't have good relationships I've actually had very terrible relationships very terrible relationships. I don't even want to talk about it because now I'm getting depressed talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this wasn't the best topic to pick today, but Why you know what? Maybe this is a good one. It'll give you some positive <laughs> reinforcement from me because I'm an optimist. You know. You know. You know. I just want to say one thing. Breakups are like it. oil spills. Mm-hmm. In return, in 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 regards to material things, like I find random things that I'm like from that I from girls I've dated, like they buy me things or something or. 
I'd buy them something and forget to give it to them and just I'd find them years later and I'll be like, oh, that's lame. I remember there's, I dated a girl in high school and like I found her like picture one day over around my desk and Ooh, I'm just like, friendly I'm like reminder. come on, that's, that's just, the, who put this there? <laughs> come on, universe. <laughs> what is, really? what's this? Yeah. No, sometimes, uh. well, like I was never exactly given anything from any of my past suitors. Well, a kind of, yes, I have. I have a sweater. Oh, that's adorable. And it's warm as heck. I still wear it because it's warm, but like, um, that's cool. no, like I find a lot of things from social media, like MSN conversations. I remember I went, th- I somehow tapped into my old laptop and like, yeah, they can, I just they went can save. Through, yeah. Yeah. I went through like my pictures and my conversations and <laughs> this is like months back because my that laptop's like busted now but <laughs> I remember reading through some of my old conversations with people that like I wouldn't say we were dating but like they were potential people I could have dated but it just never worked out that way and I was thinking yeah. wow <laughs> memories it's like I don't know if I want to see this I don't know how I feel about it but it's right there in my face and I can't run away from it right now and you know it's crazy <laughs> and you can't just not read them all yeah like it's just there like you Curiosity killed the cat in that situation. It was insane. I was there for a good hour, hour and a half, just, like, looking up stuff. Um, like, the very, very, very kind of first girl I've ever dated. Uh, it wasn't really a relationship, but she made me, like, this little, like, bracelet. Yeah. And I just kept that for some reason. I'm just kind of like, yeah, sure. Because I always see it. Like, I'm like, should I throw that out? Is it weird that I'm holding on to this? I'm like, eh. Well. <laughs> she broke up with me through MySpace. Ooh, cold. <laughs> Sorry, what were you going to say, though? I see. No, I was going to say, like, Sal, you're 23. I'm yeah. 21. Um, 23. Okay, I've been in some pretty interesting predicaments. You know, I've been through some major highs where things have been wonderful. And then, you know, I've had my fair share of experiences where it's like, oh, well, better luck next time. Really bad ones, too. But I'm not going to sit here and be all pessimistic about it because there's no need to have energy like that. But exactly. Um, my opinion now, after the past year, I've just been kind of figuring out what I want in the past year to say hypothetically I've come to realize that as a 21 year old student working two jobs volunteering you know trying to get my career on the road I do not want to get emotionally or mentally or what's what's the word I'm looking for involved with a person spiritually and in any sort of way like that in a long-term relationship unless I know it's gonna end somewhere like unless it's gonna like you know potentially go further if I see potential Mm -hmm. I've come to realize that like I just I mean I'm cool with dating and whatnot but you know I I have this like weird spidey sense where I know after like the second or third date if I can see myself you know pursuing you further and it's been pretty accurate so far so (laughs) you know I wish I had that. That would help I, me out. It's insane, my instinct. <laughs> I have a crazy instinct. I don't know. My gut's usually right about a lot of things. That's pretty good. And it's been pretty on point lately, so I'm following that. Mind you, I have a pretty good head on my shoulders, too. Mm-hmm. And even, even Mike, Mike Giansante, he said that, too. He's like, man, I'm so sick of small talk. No, I feel that. <laughs> He's like, man, just, just if, if someone, I don't like someone in my life, I'm just going to tell them right up somewhere. I'm like, you know, I'll just not work now. I Peace. agree. I have gotten mm-hmm. to the point, especially in the past, like, maybe six months to the year. I mean, I don't want to say I've changed, but I've grown up a lot in the sense where I don't want to deal with people's crap anymore. I don't want to sit there and have a conversation where I know it's not going to get anywhere. And I don't want to sit there and have a conversation where I don't feel like I'm being myself. Mm-hmm. I've gotten to the point where I'm willing to cut a person out of my life if I feel that... I mean, I don't think it's a selfish thing to say this, but if we know... If it's a mutual feeling that, you know, this isn't going to go anywhere, even in terms of, like, a friendship, then, like, honestly, Mm -hmm. I'm getting to the point where it's, like, I'd rather focus on the relationships that are, you know, they're going to be there. Yeah, exactly. Like, my family and, like, my best friends, which, honestly... Not wasting your time. I know I'm not wasting my time with them. The friends I have right now are, honestly... I'm blessed. I am so blessed. I'm so lucky to have them in my life. I love you so much. Yeah. I know they'll be listening to this, and I know they're going to be all fangirly with me later after this, but... Boom.com. Woo. But, yeah. But, um, no, again, like, there's a... Again, I said in the last podcast about narcissism and stuff like that, but Mm -hmm. there's a reason why the relationships with my friends have lasted, like, 10 years in some cases, and which have been so long, and, like, my actual romantic relationships haven't. It's because 
I've, they've taken the time to get to know me. I've taken the time to get to know them. And it's different because there's so much more superficial, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When you get to know a person that you see is a suitable partner, you automatically go for the superficial aspects of it. You know, what do they do? Yeah. Um, do they make money? What's your job? What's your job? What kind of car do you drive? What's your sign? Are you in school? What kind of clothes do you wear? What's your past? I want to know. What's your resume? Let me see like your you resume. Don't, yeah, basically, like you don't. I mean. When, when you have a, when you when you when you brush your teeth, do you squeeze the tube? From the bottom <laughs> yeah. Of the top? <laughs> no, I imagine people actually be serious about that. No, it's I crazy. know. Hi, hygienic, are you hygienic? And honestly, <laughs> like you go into a date maybe not having those intentions up front, but mm -hmm. they're in the back of your head. So you're subconsciously thinking about it. Let's be honest, we all do it. Like. Unless you've known that person for a long time and I've already gone past that point and it's like I've always wanted to ask you out and here we are, <laughs> then like, when you go on a first date with someone, you want to figure those all out. It's not like a friendship where you're like, oh my god, what's your favorite color? Let's go sing and dance and go skipping and play video games and watch movies. No. <laughs> Netflix. No. Let's Netflix go. all day long. Uh -huh. No. It's not like that. I know that's one thing, and that's why too. that's what I can't say about casual dating, because I'm such an easygoing, laid-back person where I could literally talk about anything, and then mm. sometimes people will be like, "So, like, what do you want to do with your life?" And I'm like, "I did not come here to be interviewed. <laughs> I did not come here to be interrogated about my life. Please, can we not?" It's go so funny this? when when first dates become like job interviews. It's yeah, hilarious. it's so like, like since when am I like a prospect here? What can you do for me? Yeah. Okay. How can you benefit me? Let's be horrible. let's be partners. Let's be together. I, I I hire you as like my life partner. No, absolutely not. I live with my nunna, just so you know. Grandmother. My grandmother. For those of you that are not of Italian descent, um, she's wonderful. Honestly, she's got a heart of gold. She is um, probably the funniest person I know. She makes me laugh every day. You know, <laughs> she does drive me insane. She drives me crazy, but it's the good kind of crazy because I literally go to bed every night and say wow I'm lucky to be able to say I've lived with her she has good relationship advice she well kind of biased but no, it's no, extreme really. it, it, no it's really biased okay because okay she was married when she was what like 17 18 and she was married with him for how old was, how long were they married 45 years um, I'm not sure they like had a, lot a long of kids, they had, well my mom is one of, I think, seven or eight sisters, and we have two uncles. Like, there's a lot of kids there, and they built a life together, you know? So the, the relationship advice, especially someone that comes from Italy, um, very biased, because, again, I'm 21 years old, I'm single. She always, she's always asking me, why are you single? Like, why aren't you pursuing anyone? And when I tell her, you know, <laughs> I just want to finish school off and, you know, make my own money before I mm -hmm. start a life with another person because it's to the point in today's society where you really don't know if you're going to have a partner in yeah, your life at true. all. Like, even a life partner, you don't know if you're just going to be a single or if you'll be with someone or if you'll be living with a bunch of different people. You don't know if you're going to have a family anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a different, mean, different kind of world we live in. It's today. a different world we live in. It's like a wild card game. Like, you take it day by day. You can't really plan ahead like this anymore. And so here I am just trying to make sure I have a life ready for myself when I'm constantly hearing, why are you single? Why? How yeah, I listened to this podcast and it wasn't like... How do I put this? Um, basically, what he said was there's two types of relationship. There's com consumer relationships where it's like, you got to fit my needs or else I'm just going to go to the next person. It's like, kind how of. are you going to benefit you and how will you benefit me? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, like it's And if like, you're not, um, then I'll just go to the next person. It's very superficial. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. And then there, he's talking about how let's just both agree to be human beings with each other and just be completely comfortable with each other, talk to each other, communicate. You know, it's like improving the, your relationship with that person and not just fitting, fitting your needs. This guy was explaining it differently. So it's very interesting. It's in, that is an interesting point of view. Um, I do agree with that, though, in a particular sense. Um, I do agree with what you were saying in a sense where I do believe that if I'm going to be with a person, I want to be with someone who brings out some, the better in me. But mm -hmm. I want that person to accept the fact that I am human and I am, I do make mistakes. I am not perfect. Mm -hmm. by, far, by all means, I am not anywhere close to the perfect human being. I make mistakes on a daily basis and I laugh yeah. at myself all the time for it. I'm very open with the fact of telling people that I'm a very flawed human being. Oh, way. yeah. I'm okay with that. I can honestly say that I like the person I am, perfect mm -hmm. or not perfect, you know. It happens. 
you yeah. may say the wrong thing at the wrong time, wrong place, wrong person. Yeah. You might do the wrong thing, wrong place, wrong time, but so does everyone else. And it's just a matter of accepting that flaw in yourself that'll get you a whole lot further than most people. And especially, like, if you're going to be in a long-term relationship with someone, that's something you need to already kind of know about yourself when getting into it, because that just makes it so much stronger, in my opinion. I mean, I th that's my personal opinion based off of people that are in success successful long-term relationships. Mm -hmm. The fact that they bring out the best in each other and that they build a life together based on, you know, beliefs that they share and beliefs that they differ from and... You know, it's a mutual thing. Like that was interesting to me. Um, one of my friends sent me that. Interesting. So he's like, "Yo, like you should check this out, bro." On I'm another. Like, Thanks, bro. Awesome. Fist bump. Boom. Yeah, bro. You wanna chill and be manly men together? Yeah. Yeah, bro. That's totally not weird, bro. Okay. Well, right now I'm currently in school again for um, social service work at Mohawk, and I'm. Studying, studying a lot of human behavior right now and as an elective I'm taking a human sexuality course and some of the contents of that course have discussed um, what men and women look for in a partner and from my studies and my research um, I actually wrote a paper about the law of attraction and love at first sight and whatnot and from my findings and based off of what I've learned in class and what I've done in papers um, Subconsciously, what men look for in women is a partner that is physically attractive, and naturally, they're actually more bound or like naturally attracted to women with wider hips because apparently they are more prone to childbirth. It's like that's like kind of like a survival thing. Like it's like a survival thing. instinct. Yeah. Yeah, it's a survival instinct. Yeah. Instinct. 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 Women have the same idea that they're looking for a physically attractive man, but they're yeah. also looking at it in a more, like, emotional sense where it's like, is this partner sensitive? Can this partner take care of me? Can this partner, you know, be there for me when I'm at my worst? They look at it in that sort of way, and men look at it in a sense where, you know, will she support me? Are they the kind of like narcissistic comments you think? It's a little bit on the kind of borderline, kind of borderline yeah. on that train of thought. And it's not even like we want to think that way. It's a subconscious mm -hmm. way we react to one another. It's hardwired into It's hardwired world. into our system. Wild. Hard wild. Hardwired. Uh, again. The wall. There we go the again with that little minor speech thing. But yeah. I'm not a flawed human being. I am flawed. I am so flawed. Date me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, for those of you who understand my point, like, I, I'll be the first to admit it. I can be pretty, um, it's kind of natural to just, you know, automatically look for what you find physically attractive about the person you're pursuing. Like, mm -hmm. it's something I look for, I'm not gonna lie, but it's not the most important thing to me. I'm sure nowadays people are realizing the importance of you want to get in a relationship with someone, you want someone to be there for you, and, you know... Mm -hmm. Join you on this journey of life if you're thinking that far ahead. We're getting ahead. deep here. We're getting deep. Um, you don't want them just to be a pretty face standing beside you. Let's face mm -hmm. it. You don't want to just have a trophy girlfriend, boyfriend, partner, candy. eye candy. No. Arm candy. Because if I were to go home at the end of the day and say to this eye candy, so tell me about your day, and they just looked at me and smiled and said, it was good. <laughs> oh, I'd rather chew tinfoil. Like... <laughs> I don't know. I'm personally the kind of person that finds a sense of self-awareness attractive. Like, if you know mm -hmm. who you are and you're confident in yourself and you're willing to accept that you make mistakes, mm -hmm. honestly, that's, like, the golden ticket for me here. Like, yeah. and, of course, naturally hardwired into my system, there's going to be the idea of, oh, what's he doing with his life? Does he sit around all day and play video games? Or does he do that on the side and then, you know, has a job? Is he in school? Of course we're thinking about that nowadays. We have to think about that nowadays because that is society. The person has bad habits, it's not a good thing because bad habits are hard to get out of because they're bad. They're hard to get out of, but they're not impossible to change. Yes. I don't think people change. I think people can change their habits and I think people mm -hmm. can change their attitudes and mentalities. I think that, that, I think that can kind of 
switch over in life. But let's face it, your personality traits and your genetic behaviors and whatnot, that's hardwired for life, man. Like, you're stuck with that. Bro. And that's that's something you just got to live with. I'm just saying. Just saying. So it's better to accept it and work with what you got than sit there and be ignorant about it. So just saying. That's my advice to you. Physical attraction, it only it only like lasts so long until you have to like get to know the person. Oh yeah. Um, about two weeks ago, I was out for dinner, and I don't know. We were just discussing how people, how like how we react in social situations, and I said like, you know, I'm just the kind of person. I'm outgoing, I do what I can to make other people comfortable, but a lot of the times I end up like keeping in touch with these people. And he was like, it's because you're pretty. People like pretty people. <laughs> and I thought about that for a second and I'm thinking, no, no, that's not right. And then I thought about it hypothetically and I'm thinking, maybe it is true. I don't know, like I'm thinking about yeah. high school, like you see those people who are quote unquote, you know, popular. A lot of them are, you know, attractive mm -hmm. and you would say that they're I guess more liked by default because of that and I never thought of myself like that because I'm goofy and kind of weird and sort of awkward I'm flawed I'm flawed you're kind of, awkward kind of strange <laughs> well I, I'm awkward in a different way than you are awkward yeah I'm just very awkward you're just not that awkward I'm not that awkward but I'm awkward <laughs> I can be if I'm in an awkward um, situation I'm just not good at like getting out of it smoothly <laughs> I've had like I've had someone tell me that like confident people like to hang around confident people. Um, it's I guess in like a sort of a harsh reality way, it is kind of true. Yeah, I don't it's know. true. Yeah, like, you don't want to hang out with someone who's always a downer. Yeah, so, I don't know. You know, I try to hang around people in general. Have a lot of money. No, when you not even. You go to the bar, you can buy a lot of drinks. No, not necessarily. I like oh, hanging around people who aren't constantly thinking and overthinking situations and you know what people are perceiving them to be like you know like because mm -hmm. i don't think that way i go out and i kind of just do what i want that's good i don't really know i, I dance i kind of shout i don't know <laughs> like, i'm a little obnoxious laugh. yeah i'm not that's, afraid to admit it that's one thing i realized i'm like who cares what people think because at the end of the day like if you want to feel good about something go then ahead go. and feel like happiness is a choice it's a it, honestly, it's a state of mind. I think it's a state of mind. It's it really is, mm. and if you choose to surround yourself with people that make you happy, relationship partner included, mm -hmm. then that'll reflect on your attitude. Um, like when I look, what I look for in a girl is how they kind of hold themselves. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like most guys are like, oh, yo, look at that girl. She's so good looking, Bur girl. Why don't you, girl, let's go for coffee, girl. And we'll just kind of just be coffee people, girl. 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 Are you taking a selfie? I'm taking a Snapchat. But you know, I I look at them like, okay, this girl, what's she, what's she, what's she about, bro? How does she handle situations? Does she freak out and complain, mm -hmm. or is she like calm and just kind of like, let's let's be mature about this situation. Let's be reasonable. I know that's kind of odd, but. No, not at all. No? Okay. I don't think so. Going back to the whole conversation on, like, you know, good looks don't don't always stay. Yeah. One thing that, like, if your girl has nice eyes, she'll probably have nice eyes for her entire life. Yeah. And I'm talking about the eyes in her head. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, that, that'll always stay, you know? Think about it. If you get married to someone and you just wake it up next to them all the time, you're just going to see their eyes. <laughs> I see Hello. you. Hi. Good morning. Hello. I'm looking at you with my eyes and they're really nice. Hi, both. They haven't aged. Both are nice. <sighs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, those are always going to say the same, but... Yeah. I don't know. Okay. First impressions of people, whether you admit it or not, they matter. Are they always correct? No. Okay, one of my best friends. She... Uh, shout out to Erin. Hi. Um, Hi, Erin. She... Thanks for listening, Erin. <laughs> Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Um, no, she hated me. For like a year and a half, we worked together. Never mind, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she couldn't stand me. She thought I was like the weirdest person ever, and she thought I was so two faced. <laughs> and um, and then we like somehow started to like get to know each other, and now like talk to this girl all the time. Like, oh my god, we got a lot in common. Yeah, I don't know. We're That's awesome. pretty close now, and it's like you know what? 
first impressions aren't always legit, but they mm-hmm. do matter because clearly that gave yeah. her an impression for a long time. But um, no, like say I meet a person and I find them attractive right off the bat. Sure, I might want to, you know, be like, hey, I want to get to know this person. But then what if you sit down and have a conversation? Mm-hmm. Will that change? Probably. You might think, wow, this person has absolutely nothing in common with me. Or you could be like, you know what? Where have you been all my life? Let's be <laughs> friends. Shall we? Like, let's start with a friendship first. Let's start with a friendship. Friendship. Let's go. Let's that go was get a, some ice cream. Ice, ice, what? Sushi. Ice cream. Sushi. We had that whole, remember how we had the whole conversation about how ice cream dates are awesome? Oh, they're so much more endearing than coffee dates. I know. It's just like. It's so basic uh, to say, hey, uh, want to go for coffee? Uh, like, no. Let's go for ice cream. Going for ice cream. You know what? There's so many different elements to this. You could see what kind of ice cream are they going to pick? Are they going to get a sundae? Are they going to get a twisty cone? Are they going to get a blizzard? What's going to happen? I don't know. What kind oh, of ice cream gosh. person are they? And then it's just so much fun, so much more fun to eat eat ice cream than it is to drink coffee coffee is hot coffee makes your breath smell like no who wants to go on a coffee date and sit there awkwardly across the table from one another ice cream you can try each other's flavors like it's just so much more fun so much more lighthearted. Mm-hmm. i don't know and you want to know something i don't think i've ever asked a guy to go for coffee unless we were like legit gonna talk about something yeah yeah Some i've always i literally it. asked i was telling sal this early i've asked a guy out on a date literally saying so uh want to go get food sometime you want to eat food it was like the most awkward way to bring it up but it was so funny and he actually agreed and it was probably one of the best dates i've ever had that's awesome never worked out obviously here i am single in 21 (laughs) but like you know what like it was fun it was a good time and i do not regret a single moment of it so yeah that is that good food is great i'm gonna try that one day you should hey you want to go get food it's kind of like some it reminded me off of like a scene of from elf Oh, yeah. Remember when Buddy the Elf asked out the girl who, <laughs> who plays her again, Zoe Deschanel? Yeah, Zoe Deschanel. I highly, by the way, I highly recommend watching that show she's in. I think it's called like The Real Girl or something. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. <laughs> and she's really funny in there though. I've watched it a couple times on Netflix just because, but like, and for some reason I never remember the title of the show. But she's hilarious. She's like my spirit animal, except she's a person <laughs> combined with Emma Stone. Oh, same person. But yeah, oh uh, I'm not. I'm really not good with first impressions. I just point that out. I know, um, ironically... Black and white for me. I know, ironically, like, my, my longest relationships are with women who I've had to pursue them and, like, convince them. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Like, wait, no, hey, hold on, hold on, wait for me, hold up, okay, hold on, okay, I've caught up to you, okay, okay, coffee, um, me, you, coffee. Now, yeah? Um, yes, coffee. What are you talking about? Yes. I, we'll go for coffee? You're, uh, um, coffee. Uh, okay, fine. I don't want to feel bad. And then we have a conversation. And then they fall in love. And they're like, oh my god, you're so great. I'm so sorry that I didn't tell you You're just coffee. so great. Oh okay. my god, great. So great. Oh wow. my god, let's go for coffee. Coffee, coffee. And you know what? Sometimes Get caffeine. Again. Coffee. I dated a guy for a ah. little bit who I thought was the biggest jerk ever coffee and then i actually sat down and had a conversation with him and he ended up being like really cool i don't know see things ha- things cool. are funny that way like i didn't really date it was just like you know we thought we were like cool people and just like mutual had respect. like a mutual yeah crush on each other it was weird i don't know how to explain it but it was fun <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i'm yeah. gonna bring up a statistic that we actually saw earlier this yeah. is kind of changing the ball game a little bit bring that um, up yo According to BuzzFeed.com, 65% of couples in long-term relationships move in together before they married, before they get married. Hmm. Interesting. That's... Do you agree or disagree with this uh, Well, first I need to move out to actually yes. um, fully understand that statistic. Yes. Which I am still working on. Yes. Um, probably why I'm still single. <laughs> well, um, no, it's normal for people in their 20s, especially early 20s, to yeah, that's true. reside at home nowadays. So Chill at home. Yeah. With my Maja and my Faja and my Carmen dog. Carmen Lure, awesome. My doggy dog and my, my kitty cat. Home dog. Home dog. Kitty cat. cat. Yeah. This is really random, but did you hear that P. Diddy is becoming Puff Daddy again? <laughs> cool. Is Snoop Dogg still Snoop Lion? Yep. Is he going back to Snoop Dogg? Don't think so. Okay. Okay. That's weird, Puff Daddy. Yeah. That's so 2002, attention. whatever. Anyways, as awesome I was saying, too. I have never personally lived with a significant other. Mm-hmm. And I think that 
the idea of living with someone before getting married. If you see the relationship going somewhere and you see that you guys work well together and you've already been with each other for a decent amount of time and you feel that it's the next big step in, you know, make kind of forming your life together, then why hold back? As long as you're thinking positively about it and you think that it could go well, which, you know, maybe it won't, then you know what? Then why not? Like, are you kind of just kind of like being like, all right, you got to do this. You guys come completely meet my needs in every department or else I'll just move on to the next yeah. person. You have the money. It's like a vendor. You're not crazy. I'm going to give let's, you money. Let's be together. You're, you perform your service. Yeah. By being a relationship and partner with my life. Yeah. <laughs> or you could look at it in the sense where I feel like you bring out the best in me. Why not live together? I'm going to be completely honest with you. I am a flawed human being and we are going to fight a lot. But, but you know what? I care about you and that doesn't matter because there are times that you bring out yeah. the good and we work well together. Honestly, at least we're fighting for each other. Yeah, exactly. Like, Oh, I'm not the kind of person that would... At least I don't think I'm the kind of person that would argue over something stupid. Yeah, you, you, you'll get to that point. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm sure at one point Trust I me. will. It, it, it happens. I'm sure it does. You end up breaking up over... Um, stupid stuff. A quarter that you found on the ground and you didn't oh. give her the quarter. She's like, why didn't you give me the quarter? That's so insensitive of you. Yeah. Wait, do we still have quarters? Or no, they got rid of pennies. Oh my okay. gosh! Yes, we have quarters. Okay. Oh my gosh! Yo. Oh my gosh! There, my girl. Mm. You sound like mm. you. Exactly. Okay. Oof. Okay. Let's let's go. Um, yeah, let's just stop the podcast. Yeah. Right here. Uh, we have discussed a lot besides just relationships and um, you know our opinions on it we've also discussed you know people bringing out the good and bad in each other and but to sum up the topic of our you know long-term relationships and long-term society podcast, yeah yeah <laughs> long-term podcast. i have a long-term relationship with this podcast actually, actually so, yeah what were you gonna say sorry everyone is entitled to their opinion especially in today's society we have become more accepting and more open to different ideas of alternate lifestyles in whatever way shape or form that may be for you and it's a matter of learning to accept who you are Mm -hmm. and being comfortable with going that extra step um you know you need to understand i find this important that you are a flawed person, right, Sal? Uh, yeah. We are flawed. I am very flawed. I'm not offended flawed. by that because no. that's very true. It is so true. If like, someone were to come up to me say, hey, Sal, you're a flawed person, I'm like, I'd yeah, like, I know. Thanks, you too. Thank you for pointing. Yeah, thanks. Like, you hey, too. like hey yourself. <laughs> yeah. You too, yep. Like, st- like, I've been told so many countless times that I'm scatterbrained and I'm a little bit obnoxious. I gotta go to the bathroom. Thanks, you too. Okay, well, we're gonna end this anyway, so <laughs> continue to stay for two minutes. Go, go, I gotta Can you poop. hold your pay? Yeah, go. Okay. And that, in sum, is generally what we are trying to discuss. Again, we are not relationship experts. We are just everyday people like me and you. Just saying things. Just, just saying things. Very flawed. Very flawed, imperfect, but we have an opinion and we think it matters. We have our natural intelligence and we have opinions and thoughts from other people that we have brought forth here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please... Email me at sellyourpal at gmail.com. Sorry, I cut you off there. No worries. Or Yeah. Or uh, follow me on Twitter, kayumps, C-A-Y-U-M-P-S. I tweet about stuff that is irrelevant and irrelevant at the same time, but I'm entertaining. I'm an entertaining individual. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Subscribe on iTunes. Yes. Yep. But yeah. You should follow this podcast. Just saying podcast. Just saying podcast. Adios. I gotta go. Bye. Bye.